Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to the JDBC Virtual Biz Zone. My name is Sansia Campbell, and I'm your host for this morning. This morning, we're going to be talking about logistics management. As you know, we're heading towards what is possibly the most busy retail season of the year, and that is Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year, and for a lot of us, a very joyful time but it also involves a lot of business and business people. And as the agency that is responsible for the sustainable development of business, but also in providing guidance for our MSMEs, we've put together quite a number of different sessions over the past year, just to guide our MSMEs in the right direction. And of course, as I said before, as we move towards the Christmas season, one of the things that is going to be important is getting those goods to customs. And so the Jamaica Customs Agency is a crucial agency at this time of the year. And so we've invited them to come, come along here this morning and to share with us on the theme, moving goods in the Christmas rush. This is very, very important information. So if you are here this morning and you have questions, Here's your opportunity. Um, in addition to the presenter, who I will introduce in a minute, there will also be another young lady in the chat. I think her name is Keisha Dixon. And Keisha is going to be answering your questions while the presenter presents. And of course, the presenter will also take questions from you as well. So this, this morning promises to be very, very exciting, very, very informative, and please feel free to share with us. Now, this morning we have with us Ms. Shelly Ann Houghton, and she's the operations manager for Seaboard Warehouse Free Zone Operations in Montego Bay. Now, this is the line that got me when I was reading it. Ms. Houghton has been employed with the Jamaica Customs Agency for over 30 years, and when I looked at Ms. Houghton this morning, she never look a day older than 31. So I don't know, I'm, I'm stuck here. But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> she served in various areas of operations. Her wealth of experience has allowed her to gain invaluable knowledge in customs laws, processes, and the supply chain. She holds a master's in business psychology from the University of South Wales and is a two-time awardee of the World Customs Organization Certificate of Merit in service excellence and she's a nature enthusiast and makes reference to her plants as her baby all right so miss Houghton is going to be here this morning and she's going to be sharing with us on moving goods in the christmas rush just a reminder that the session is being recorded and so you can feel free to visit the jbdc youtube channel if you can't get a chance to stay for the entire time Feel free to visit our YouTube channel at JBDC Jamaica and subscribe as well so that when new content comes up, you can be the first to be notified. And if you know anybody who wants to be a part of this morning's session, call them and remind them, or you can direct them to the YouTube channel as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Michelle Ann Horton, and she's going to take you through the presentation. And please, 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 please feel free to ask questions in the chat. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Shelly, it's over to you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me, Sancia, and the JBDC team. It is my absolute pleasure to be here. This morning, I will be presenting on moving goods in the Christmas rush. And I hope that as we move along, at least at the end of the presentation, I will be able to field all its all of your questions and those that I cannot answer this time, please feel free to use my email address and I'll get the requisite um, information for you. As said earlier, my colleagues, um, Keisha Dixon along with Easton Cunningham and Vanessa Dixon, Vanessa Smith, sorry, will be in the chat and they will be able to answer most, if not all of your questions as we move along.
And we'll be discussing areas such as clearing goods through the JCA, regulator requirements, concessions, clearance options. Um, medium, small, and micro enterprises, MSMEs, are essential to the Jamaican economy as they are responsible for a large percentage of employment and as such a vital to our economic growth and development. Customs in playing its part in fostering this economic growth um, through its mandate of trade facilitation, border protection and revenue collection seeks to deliver to our stakeholders a high level of professionalism and efficiency whilst fostering compliance and contributing to national development and protection of our society. I'm sorry. Over the years, the Jamaican Customs Agency has implemented a number of measures at the various ports in preparation for the increase in the importation of goods. These include extended warehouse working hours to facilitate the anticipated increase in cargo volumes, opening on weekends for some warehouses, extending extended working hours and opening on weekends at both Kingston and Montego Bay custom houses. So you will find that the agency in collaboration with the port operation operators will extend working hours during the busy Christmas season to facilitate any anticipated increase in cargo volumes. And as said, the warehouse operators will also open on weekends when necessary. And this is usually communicated to stakeholders and clients through the different media houses. And Customs House in Montego Bay and Kingston will open its doors on weekends as well where, where necessary and they will actually open for longer hours during the week so that the commercial declarations can be processed to mitigate um, any delays in clearance. Some trade facilitation initiatives that has been introduced by the agency are the express clearance process, contactless clearance process, online track and trace service, and the online valuation verification appointment portal. The ECP provides a service where the declarations are actually done by your agent or your broker, as the case may be. So there is no need to go to the port and having to wait on the examining officer to prepare this document. This is done and paid for prior to you visiting the port of importation. So it, it, is, it is also a way of mitigating delays. The contactless clearance process, the CCP, this is new to the JCA, it's a very new initiative. As a matter of fact, the pilot is just being run now at some warehouses. And this is a process where the importer no longer has to visit the warehouse to effect clearance of the goods. And the pilot is basically on non-commercial items for now. So the goods are cleared by, the, the goods are, are, are ex, um, the goods will be examined by customs. However, only customs and, and agents of the warehouse operators will be at that area at that time to effect the clearance process. So only workers for the warehouse operators and the customs officers will be in that location at that time. The online track and trace service, this is an initiative that allows the importer to actually go on the Jamaica Customs website 
to check your declaration. It requires minimum or minimal information, your declaration number, your chairing when necessary, and you will see whether or not your declaration is ready for examination. And the online valuation verification appointment portal is utilizing cases where there is a need to contact valuation we any valuation issues that you may have. Clearing goes through the Jamaica Customs Agency. Category of commercial goods, goods imported for business purposes to include raw material, intermediate goods, consumables, machinery, and equipment. Goods imported for resale and samples imported for business purposes. Goods with a cost insurance and freight CIF value of US 5,000 or more must be cleared by a licensed customs broker. The use of a customs broker to clear goods under US 5,000 is optional. An agent may be able to facilitate this process for you. Goods, both commercial and non-commercial with a free onboard value of US 50 or less is free of customs duty. And we call this the minimis value. So if you have a small package that is being imported for you by a courier service, anything that is 50 US dollars or less, FOB or FOA is free of customs duty. The only thing you should be paying for this would be the charges incurred for shipping and the agent's cost for clearance. But there is no, absolutely no customs duties on goods $50 US or less. All commercial imports entered on an AMIS-4 or AM-4 declaration will be processed through the Entry Processing Unit EPU. This facility allows for the processing of declaration prior to the importer, broker, or agent arriving at the port for examination of the goods. So as said earlier, these declarations will be processed by EPU. So all of this will be done before the, the, the importer or the agent takes the declaration to the port for the examination of the goods in question. Documents required for clearance. Ship, shipping documents such as bill of lading or airway bill, an authentic invoice from the supplier, import permits or licenses where applicable, tax compliance certificate, TCC, tax registration number, TRN, and a copy of the general consumption tax GCT certificate. An original certificate of origin if the goods are being imported from a country with which Jamaica has a free trade agreement and for which preferential duty treatment is being claimed. So these are all documents that would be required when clearing your, your goods at the ports. The JCA has introduced a number of duty payment options to make your transactions easier and seamless. And these are debit or credit card, manager's check, online payment. And for this, importers must register with the JCA in order to pay online. Cash up to a maximum of $1 million. If your cash, if you're bringing cash to us over this amount, the cashier will not accept same. You must present a manager's check if that is your only option. The advanced deposit account, direct bank transfer using real-time gross um, settlement, sorry, RTGS. 
items requiring permits. There are several items that require licenses or permits prior to importation. Some of these include meats, fish, coconut products, edible oils, soaps, pharmaceutical items, fireworks, other explosives, firearms, firearm parts and accessories, and gaming machines. Water guns are prohibited and will be confiscated. So uh, there are a number of persons who may bring in water guns during the Christmas season for sale. Please remember that these items are prohibited. And once found, you will be charged under the Customs Act and the items will also be confiscated. There are a number of border regulatory agencies in Jamaica. Some of these BRAs responsible for granting licenses and permits are the Trade Board, the Veterinary, Veterinary sorry, Services Division, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Health, and Jamaica Agricultural Commodities Authority, JACRA. JACRA is responsible for your, your coffee, your cocoa, your coconut, and, and they have taken over from your coconut industry board and your coffee industry board, etc. Permit requirements continued. The Jamaica Single Window for Trade JSWIFT portal enables traders to submit electronically applications for licenses, permits, certificates, and other regulatory requirements. JSWIFT is available to those border regulatory agencies that have been onboarded to the platform. The BRAs that have been onboarded include Trade Board Limited and Plan Quarantine. All permits must be granted prior to the goods being landed in Jamaica. If not, then this is considered a breach of the Customs Act. Let me repeat this. All permits must be granted prior to the goods being landed in Jamaica. If the permit was not granted prior, then this is considered a breach of the Customs Act. If there are any doubts, as to whether there are permit requirements for the items that are being imported, then please contact the Jamaica Customs Agency for additional information and we will guide the process. Now, there are some advantages of using JSWIFT and it reduces cost of doing business, it reduces processing time, it increases transparency and accountability. There is an electronic submission and issue of permit clear, permits or clearances. So there is no need to take your documents to them in person. Once you have a need for a permit, then you, you submit your documents electronically and apply for the permits through same through their portal. Linking of e-permits with customs declarations. Once again, you don't need, there is no need to pick up your permit from them. The permit will be linked to your declaration. Single and convenient payment for agency fees. And you have 24 seven access to the JC Swift portal anywhere, anytime in the world. Streamlined and standardized procedures, and it promotes trade facilitation best practices. You know, this is, this is a subject that a lot of persons love to talk about, and these are benefits to our SMEs. When we talk about benefits, we talk about the concessions that are provided for the government to, to, to ease your operating costs. So the government has several waivers and incentives that provide attractive fiscal benefits to our MSMEs. Among these are the omnibus incentives legislation, which provides varying relief in respect of customs duties 
stamp duties, etc. The Customs Act provides for the duty-free importation of capital equipment and raw material. The manufacturing, tourism, and creative industries will benefit from a duty rate of 0% for industry-related consumer goods. And the Stamp Duty Act is targeted at the manufacturing sector and provides stamp duty exemption on raw materials and non-consumer goods. For manufacturers, there are duty exemptions on the following categories of imported goods. And these are raw materials, intermediate goods, packaging materials, consumables, machinery and equipment, equipment, sorry, and parts thereof. For agricultural projects, Importation of equipment and machinery, as well as revised tariff rates ranging from 0% to no higher than 20% with some exceptions. And there is a productive input relief, PIR, that provides agricultural related equipment and machinery used in the production of primary products on quality control and testing of agricultural products that would have attracted customs duties are not required to pay the customs duty. And the additional stamp duty is the when purchased for productive use. Of course, this is a big plus. There is concessions for specific motor vehicles for farming purposes. And these are accept, accessible to farmers who are registered with their local rural agriculture development authority rather. And the, this benefit is access, accessible once every five years. Toyota, Hilux, and Nissan Frontier are two pickup types that are eligible for this concession. Of course, the, the F-150 is one that is not eligible. Benefits to the tourism sector, as with the others, importation of equipment and machinery, as well as revised tariff rates, ranging from 0% to no higher than 20%, with some exceptions. And the PIR provides certain hotel industry related items, as well as tourism attraction related items that would have attracted duties and they're not required to pay the customs duty and the additional stamp duty when purchased for productive use. Wellness tourism facility is another, is another sector that actually um, benefits from the omnibus legislation and importation of equipment and machinery, as well as revised tariff rates ranging from 0% to no higher than 20% with some exceptions. The PIR provides certain healthcare, provides that certain healthcare related equipment that would have attracted customs duties are not required to pay the customs duty and the additional stamp duty when purchased for productive use. The creative industries sector also benefits and the importation of equipment and machinery as well as revised tariff rates ranging from 0% to no higher than 20% with some exceptions. The PIR also provides that musicians and filmmakers will be able to import industry related goods once they are registered under the creative industries registry which falls under the purview of the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport. So there are a number of clearance options that are offered by the JCA. For full container loads, FCLs, the importer may choose to be a part of the site inspection program. This is an approval process where the importer makes an online, makes an application to the JCA, sorry, 
and their premises and goods being imported are assessed to determine whether containers can be examined at their location. So in this case, if you have, say for instance, a container full of glassware, and for you to open this container at the port, it may result in your items being damaged. So this is an ideal case where you apply to the JCA to have your, your items examined or your container examined at your location once it's approved to mitigate any damage to any items once offloaded. Because if you open these containers at the port with these kind of items, then you are going to offload and then repack at the end of the examination process. So this is an option that should be explored. The importer may opt to be a part of the authorized economic operator program. And this is an approval process where an application is made to the JCA and the importer will go through a validation process to get the status where goods are released before or without inspection. So this is a more rigid process where you're your, your books are examined. A, a, a lot of things are considered when approving importers for AEO, but it is one that bears consideration. For both clearance options, the importer must use the services of a licensed customs broker. And I must tell you that with the AEO program, even though your goods are not examined at that time or at the time of examination, you are still subjected to post audit clearance or post audit, post auditing. And on some, in, in some instances, your declaration may be flagged for random inspection. The importer may utilize the services of their customs broker or local shipping agent to complete the clearance process for goods below US 5,000. When these services are used, a C-73 form is used to authorize clearance on behalf of the importer. And this attracts a processing fee of $5,000 paid to the JCA and is valid for one year. So if you have items below US 5,000 and there are things in your business that you need to be taken care of and you really don't want the hassle of going to the porch to clear those things, you may authorize your broker or your agent to act on your behalf to effect the clearance process. And there are some key reminders that I must give you finally. Ensure that you use only a customs broker who is registered with the Jamaica Customs Agency and possesses a valid license to practice. Also, when in doubt about permit requirements for the items you are importing, contact the requisite BRA or the JCA. And BRA is a border regulatory agencies that um, issue permits or licenses for anything that is restricted that you're planning to import. For any concession queries, contact your related government ministry or the Jamaica Customs Agency. Utilize the available payment options. This will make your life easier when dealing with customs. And as much as possible, Try to import your goods before the busy season to avoid the Christmas rush. I cannot overstate this. As much as possible, try to import your goods before the busy season, whether personal or for commercial use, try to import before. Use up the months in October and November to effect these clearances. 
Always make accurate declaration of the contents of your shipment and provide proper invoices to avoid delay. If it is that you have an invoice with goods that were purchased from a company that is related to your business, and so your price might, the, the, the relationship might have influenced the price of the goods, make sure you give customs all of this information because once they look at the price that is influenced, then a red flag will be raised and they will start to do their investigations and this will delay the process. So make sure you provide invoices to avoid delays at customs. And if there are any supporting documents you need to support that, that invoice that is so, so, um, submitted, with the price that was influenced, do so from the onset. And this is where I will field your questions. All right, thank you so much, um, Shelley. Very short presentation <laughs> there, but some very pertinent points that came out of it. I know that there's a question in the chat from um, Peter Ann Wright, and she wanted to know how do we get a list of those health equipment that are exempted from custom duties and stamp duties? Can you answer that question for me? Um, most, if not all of the equipment for um, your, the, the tourism health, our wellness sector would be free of import duty. But of course, the process is the same. You will register with the requisite ministry for the concessions. Okay, and then are there any specific opening and closing hours coming up in relation to you know, the, the, the busy season that is coming up and when will that begin? So normally the, the agency will collaborate with the port operators and they will decide what hours they should extend the normal operating um, hours to. So it's not something that is decided by customs only. We have to meet with our stakeholders and determine what is necessary. So usually in the month of December, sometimes as um, early as late, late November, you find that they will start opening later, depending on the increase in volumes at that time. But the information will be communicated for stakeholders um, via whatever medium is chosen at that time. Okay, and then um, as it relates to, well, let me, let me take some more questions that are coming into the chat here. Melody is asking about the duty-free raw material imports. Can you provide any information on that? Um, I would love for her to be a little bit more specific. All right, so Melody, just, just go ahead and express to us what you're, what you're really referring to so that we can give you the very best response. And just before I continue with the questions, just want to inform persons that I have placed in the chat our feedback form for, the, for this morning's session. And I'm asking you, please just complete it for us because we want to know what other sessions you want to see coming from us. Uh, next question from Kelly and Paulwell. Does the JCA have any intention of increasing the dutiful free imports from USD 500 when traveling through the air, airports, especially due to ongoing increases in, in inflation? Okay, so the, the allowance is not usually determined by the JCA. That is usually determined at the ministry level. So once that has changed at that level and is communicated to us, then we will implement as necessary. Okay. Um, I noticed someone bringing up the contactless system here. Um, 
Before I ask that question, is there any information that you can provide to us about the contactless system? I think it has something to do with how business persons can um, get in, you know, get their goods through the JCA during this time, or is a new system that was just introduced? Can you give us any information on that, that one? It is a new system that is being introduced. It, it's actually being piloted as we speak in some warehouses. So um, as, as it stands, it is, it is similar to the process that was used by, or is being used by door-to-door, -door, the door-to-door -door, um, shipments where the agents would clear on behalf of the client. So the agents would um, do all the necessary clearance processes and we would examine the goods. But in this case, it is actually the, 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 the individuals that are employed to the warehouses who will actually open and unpack these, these, these packages for us to examine. And then the goods, after the clearance process, the goods will be handed over to the agents. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna allow Melanie. Melanie, I would love for you to ask your question. So I'm going to unmute you and you go ahead. This is a question that was being asked before, Shelly, about- Yes. Um, what was it about? The duty-free raw material imports. So uh, Melanie, we're gonna ask you to unmute while Melanie, gets ready to unmute, let us take another comment from the chat. Um, until Melanie unmute. So the, for the contactless system, how are discrepancies with loss or damage of goods treated? And will importers require a broker to assist with the contactless system? So for the contactless system, the broker will not be a part of the examination process. The broker will prepare the necessary documentation if it's yeah. a commercial shipment. For now, we will not be having the commercial um, shipments as part of this process. Okay, so these are these are domestic personal. These are mm -hmm, okay. non-commercial items. Okay. For the okay. pilot, it's just non-commercial. Are are there any special any special um anything new that is gonna come along for the for businesses in this time, or are we just gonna go ahead with what what currently obtains? Um, other than the new initiatives that I outlined, that is it. All right. All right. Simone Chamberlain, you have your hand up. So we're going to go ahead and unmute you so you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good morning. Good morning. My question is related to J Swift. Um, customs have since introduced a um, little over, little under a month ago where you need to have the release before entry can be submitted. However, the process has been long um, using the JCF Swiss system. It has, it's, it's a long process. And it also not only delay you getting the shipment, but if the permits are there and the entry is submitted, the customs is saying that you're in breach, even though you have the permits but you have not gotten the release yet. Um, is there any way that customs can review that matter as it relates to JC and JACRA? So you were given the initial permit to import the goods. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, that's correct. You always have to have the permits ahead of right. time before you import the right. goods. And on when the vessel arrives, JACRA wants you to submit a release so based on the I'm permit. I am going to tell you what I normally tell people when they're having this kind of difficulty. Remind me of your name again. Simone. So Simone, the area that you're dealing with at that particular time, please ask to speak to the supervisor or the manager, the custom supervisor or the manager. 
Because okay. you already got that document to import your goods. You got the permit. Correct. Correct. You have the permit. So no, all you're doing is is trying to get the release for them to act on. Right. right? But, but so customs is the one who has introduced that they will not be doing any processing and the entry without the release. So is it that you are not, you have not yet gotten the, the release, but you're trying to effect clearance. I'm just trying correct. to make sure that I have it correct. Correct, because JACRO gives you 72 hours after application before they issue the release. Okay, so that is something that um, we will have to take up with JACRO. But I don't see where it's a breach once you have a permit in hand. We Correct. just need to have the. We just need to get the release so that your shipments can be released from the port. That is all. Okay. It should not be a breach. Okay. And I understand the concerns with Jacqua specifically. Correct. All right. Thank you. All right. You're Thank welcome. you so much, Simone. Um, Narisha, the, the question that you uh, she asked about uh, the. For the contactless system, how are discrepancies with loss or damage of goods treated? Um, she wanted a response to that part of the question because I, I, I heard you respond to the fact that brokers are not required to assist with the contactless system, right? Right. So how are losses or are, are are damages, damage of goods treated in the system? So, in this case, of course, we will have our CCTVs, yes. So there will be camera equipment everywhere in the warehouse at that time. That area is going to be one that is so sterile. It is going to be more sterile than what we had before for the contactless. If it is that you have that kind of experience, then of course the warehouse operator will be contacted by you or your agent, right? You may, you may also have the privilege of reviewing the camera. Your agent may review the camera just to make sure that nothing was taken from your shipment as reported. And if it is that there are damage, any damage to your items, then of course the process is still the same the the that is of course um communicated to the warehouse operator and they are held culpable for anything that may be damaged by them okay. if that is their fault of course okay thank you very much shelly and yes um narisha the agent would be the shipping company right right shelly Yes. Right. All right. Another question here coming up in the chat from Peter and Wright. Um, are there any plans in place to prioritize small businesses when clearing our goods from the wharf? No priority given seeing that we are small businesses and is valuable to the economy and that they away from the business can affect our production. So can consideration be given to us to speed up the process and the long line? Um, I consider all of our customers special, yes, all clients, all stakeholders, I consider all of them special. As I said earlier in during the, the PowerPoint presentation, sometimes it's best if you utilize the services of your, your agents or your brokers to effect clearances on your behalf, because especially brokers, brokers are able to, to I should say they get through faster than any individual that may access the port themselves. So to, to mitigate any operating hours that may be lost from your business, utilize the services of your brokers. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Shelly. Let me just check in the chat if there are any additional question. Um, I, I am, I'm assuming this is the person that has the medical 
isn't because she is, you know, speaking in, in, from that perspective. She's saying that clearing up barriers versus clearing medical items is, they need special attention for that. I guess based on the business type, if it's something that we, you could look into. Because her broker, she's saying that the broker has had to have some very long waits. Okay, as always, we stand ready to review our business processes to, 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 to serve our clients better. All right. Um, thank you very much, Shelly, and thank you everyone for posting in the chat for asking your questions. Um, of course, Shelly, we're going to ask you to leave your contact information with us in the chat. Um, just in case persons have additional questions, they can take them to you uh, for future reference. But thank you very much for coming and sharing with us this morning. Any final thoughts before we whoosh out of here? Oh, definitely. I had this nice little thing pre um, prepared just to, to remind our clients that we are committed to serving you with professionalism and efficiency. We strive to ensure that our processes are standardized and this allows for more transparency. We continue to automate our services and introduce more initiatives so that we can meet the needs of our stakeholders. And as we continue to modernize our processes, we will continue to communicate and engage our customers as they will be impacted positively from all our in initiatives. And um, I might not have said this earlier, I might have alluded to it, but we are actively on most social media platforms. We, we have an um, Instagram page, and this is where we share a lot of information, especially to our MSMEs, yes? I would advise you to use this opportunity to follow the Jamaica Customs um, Instagram page. As, um, and we listen, we listen, we listen to our clients so that we, as I said earlier, so that we can review our business processes so that things can be better for them in terms of business, always. Right. And my contact information is Shellyan dot horton at jca dot gov dot jm right and you can also, okay go, go ahead, ahead. so I, and i was saying that if there were questions or if there are questions that individuals might have wanted to ask and didn't get the opportunity to do so you can feel free to email me and i will provide all the answers for you and right. natalie has given you the the, the platforms in the chat all right. All right. So, so um, I'm seeing where Natalie is posting the email address and the socials on IG, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So please, ladies and gentlemen, just like how you follow JDDC on IG, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, all of them, please make sure that you follow the, the Jamaica Customs Agency and all the other organizations, both government and otherwise, that provide support for your businesses in this time. A lot of the information that you need is on, is online, on their social media platform. Sometimes not so much so on their website, but it's on their social media platforms. So please feel free to go ahead and follow them as well. In addition to following them, Make sure that you follow JBDC on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube and check out our brand new website, www.jbdc.net. Yes, the presentation will be available following this morning's um, session. We always post on YouTube, so if you missed some of it, please feel free to subscribe 
to our YouTube channel at JBBC Jamaica. Just a reminder to complete our feedback form on this morning's presentation. We want to know um, what you thought of the presentation and what are some of the topics that you'd like us to cover in future sessions. As I said at the start, this is our logistics management series. And this morning, we dealt with moving goods in the Christmas rush. And next week, we're gonna be having another agency, the ministry actually coming and sharing with us some of the benefits that MSMEs can get from the, at, at the border through the ministry, through registering with the ministry. So make sure you tune in for that one. And as I indicated, this series is the last one for the year. We have had a very packed year. So just if you've missed any of our sessions, you can feel free to binge watch. Just go on at jbdc.net on YouTube and you'll be able to see all the sessions that we've done since January of this year. So thank you very much again for sharing with us this morning, Shelly, great information that you shared with us. That is being mentioned in the chat that was very informative. We learned a lot. And of course, if there are additional questions or anything that we need clarity for on, we will definitely reach out to you. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning and until next week, when we come back again for another presentation, see you online on social. Take care, everybody. Thanks again, Sancia. You're welcome.